connected to the aspect of Torah learning, and today is Zebulun, the businessman. Okay? Everybody is a businessman. Everyone is a businessman, which is beautiful. But let's understand why the Torah puts the order of the Nesi'im not upon the way that they were born. Put Reuben, Shimon, Yehuda, Issachar, etc. But how does the Torah put? Nachshon, Issachar, Zebulun, and tomorrow, I believe, is Reuben. Why don't you put Reuben first? So we need to understand, first of all, what, what each and every one of these, Amen. They're calling me from the main minyan, but I told them that I'm giving a class to you. So I'm staying. Okay? Anyways, I send them a message. Anyways, so it says that from Nachshon, Issachar, and Zebulun, these three Saddikim represent the life of a Jewish person. Let's talk a minute about Nachshon. What made Nachshon, Nachshon, such a special person? Short answer, an unbelievable emuna in Hashem. What was the incident that brought to the surface his emuna, his dedication and sacrifice for God? We know that the Jewish people in the seventh day of Pesach arrived to the Red Sea. And there is a commotion among the Jewish people. They see that the Egyptians are on their tail, are basically behind them, and they don't know what to do. One group says, let us go back. Other group says, let us fight. Other group says, let's run away. There was a fourth group headed by Nachshon ben Aminadab. And he says to the Jewish people, God took us out of Egypt and our mission is to go through the Red Sea, we're going to cross the Red Sea. And we all know very famous Gemara that says that when Nachshon started to walk into the water, and the water, the water reached this part of the body, one opinion says below the mouth, other opinion says by the nostrils, on that moment, the splitting of the Red Sea took place. So our rabbis tell us, Many, many times, a person must be willing to cross the river of life. The river means sometimes challenges, situations. And we know very, very well that there is a concept in Judaism known as Mesirut Nefesh. Mesirut Nefesh, although it means the giving of the soul, that's what it means literally, but actually means making a sacrifice for Hashem. Making a sacrifice for God. Nachshon knew that the Jewish people will be redeemed. He had the Munah in Hashem. He had the Munah in Moshe Rabbeinu. As the Pasuk says in the Shira, Bayaminu ba Hashem u Moshe Abdo. It says, if God promises us to take us to the Holy Land and He's going to give us the Torah, no water will stop me. You know, sometimes people say, no one will stop me. I mean, no one will stop me. This was Nachshon. It says, I have an opportunity to get closer to Hashem. I'm going to cross the water. And the miracle happened. Because at the end of the day, the Gemara says, there are three things in life which are equally difficult and challenging. Number one, the splitting of the Red Sea which is almost impossible in a physical way because the splitting is the against the nature of the water, number one. The other two things is parnasa and shalom bait, to find a wife. That's what the Gemara says. <laughs> Difficult is the marriage to the person like the splitting of the Red Sea. What else is connected to the splitting of the Red Sea? Parnasa. Because both elements, 
שידוכים, marriage and פרנסה, it's above the norm. God has someone predestined for you, and then you go through your life, you go through your situations, you go to whatever God sends you, okay? Somebody told me the other day that uh, they want to move fast into the new home, and they were not happy that they still are sleeping in the apartment. So I told them something what the Baal Shem Tov says, and this is important to know in life because sometimes we become a bit desperate or we develop, you know, a bit of anxiety when certain things don't go the way we want. So the Baal Shem Tov says that a person needs to be in a place for certain amount of days, certain amount of years, certain amount of nights. And when the time comes that you're ready for the next stage in your life, the moment will come to you. Very important to know because then once you know, okay, when Hashem wants, it will happen. That is an unbelievable concept of emunah. Is it easy and automatic to have it? I hope it is. But the reality is that it all depends to the person. But guess what? After I said this to the person, the person says, now I feel better. Now I feel better. Why? Because, you know, sometimes a person goes out on a date. Okay? Right? You're single or married? Married. Baruch Hashem. Okay? But not everybody is married or gets married right away with the first girl that they go out with. Sometimes you need to go through Shiduchim. You go one, you try one, you try the other. You go out, I don't like her, she doesn't like me, no clicking, no connection, no chemistry, different background, cultural background, whatever reason you want to go in the book. But then suddenly the right time, the right one comes. How does that happen? Because a neshama of the person needed to go through certain stages or sometimes, as I said to somebody the other day, the shiduch like it or not, and this is the reality of life, that usually the shiduch is the soulmate of the person. And sometimes people go through shalom bait issues in their marriage. So what does it tell you? Some people say, let me get divorced. You defeated the whole purpose of your marriage if you run to get divorced. Yes, there is such a thing in the Torah, God forbid, like the concept of divorce. But that can be utilized only on specific situations. Divorce is not, I don't like it, disposable. We live in a disposable society, unfortunately. Today, divorce is rampant, right below assimilation. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Assimilation, number one, divorce, number two or three. In the Jewish world, I'm talking about. We became a disposable society. The next one will be better. Nobody guarantees you that. You agree? You agree? Okay? So try to stay married. I hope nobody's planning to get divorced, God forbid. Okay? Because it's not a good sign. It's not a good time for the person. The Gemara writes that Shamayim cries, etc. But sometimes marriages go through hiccups. We all go. We all went. Some more, some less. But at the end of the day, part of our marriage is to make us better. Better people, better husbands, better Yehudim better wives, whatever gender the person is. So guess what? In marriage, in serving Hashem, Mesirut Nefesh, willing to sacrifice, is a requirement. You cannot serve Hashem without being willing to sacrifice. You cannot say, I serve Hashem whenever it's easy for me. That's not a good statement. Can you imagine God says to the person, I give you life, 
if you use it properly. Has shalom. The world will be desolated. The world will be empty. As the Cordoba that irrelevant of the behavior of the person, the person remains alive. And the person lives, and the person talks, and the person walks, and the person makes money, and the person is able to breathe. This is all out of the chesed of Hashem, and this is also a message that God believes in the person. Because many times, people don't believe in themselves. And automatically they create these walls, too difficult, too challenging. I cannot make it. The moment you say this to yourself, guess what? You're digging your own grave. Has shalom. This was Nachshon. It says, I'm going all the way. No one will stop me. Comes the next Shevet yesterday. Issachar. Issachar, we know, and Zebulun, today's representative, had a partnership. The Pasuk says, Ismah Zebulun Besetecha, Beisachar Beohalecha. Ismah Zebulun. Zebulun was a sea merchant. He will travel on the oceans for business. He was in the import export business. Spesukim in the Torah that hints us on how the Pasuk says Zebulun Lehofiamimishkon. Zebulun will live in the water. But the Pasuk says, Ismach Zebulun Besetecha. Zebulun will rejoice when he will be traveling. I ask you a question. In the olden days, which I'm not saying today is different, but in the olden days, traveling, it wasn't as comfortable and convenient the way it is today. Kosher food in the airplane, minyanim in the boats, you know, Shomer Shabbat, beautiful. All that is 21st century. But go back 2,000 years. You know, people knew when they left. They never knew if they were coming back. All kind of situations. Typhoons, hurricanes, pirates, pirates, kidnapping, God forbid. These were things that in the past, that happened more often than we can even imagine. But yet Zebulun went on the journey very happy. Why? Issachar ve'aholecha. Because Zebulun had life insurance policy. What was this life insurance? Issachar learning Torah for him. And that is the mega relationship between Torah learning and supporting of Torah learning. That is the idea of kolelim. As you know, we are going to open up a kolel soon by Ezat Hashem. And I'll give you more details as they become available, which will be a great blessing for the kahal. And more classes and more learning opportunities will be given to everyone. Smaller classes, more personalized attention, the topics of your liking, Besides the young rabbinical students learning to become rabbis themselves during the day. So our intention, Be'ezat Hashem, is to do that. But for that to happen, I need Zebulun. I need Zebulun. I need the partners. That's simple. You know what I mean, the partners? Do you understand or I need to expl explain it? You want me to explain it? I explain it to you because you ask. You need support. That's simple. So I'm going to give you an opportunity today. Simple opportunity. We are looking, and I'm saying this out of love because I want to, I want to make sure that you invest in a winning stock. I'm not going to give you something that you have to say, I'm going to give you an opportunity for a winning IPO. You know what IPO means? Rashid Tevot, initial public offering. So I'm doing an IPO today. I have available 20 shares only of the Kolel stock. That's it. 20 positions for founders. How much it costs? Very cheap. 
$18,000. Payable in a year's time. Beautiful. That will be $1,500 a month only. And if you want to stretch it out a bit more, I'm more than happy. But I have 20 stocks available for this. You become a founder of the Kolel. You become someone who sponsors the Torah. But I need to tell you a disclaimer. You know, when you invest, there is fine print, fine, 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 fine print that you need a magnifying glass to read it. I have one on me, by the way. Sure. Because sometimes we get halachic questions of family purity. So we need to decide the color, etc. So imagine you read the fine print, Heke. So I'm going to tell you the fine print of my investment. It's all spiritual, as you can imagine. That the fact that a person supports Torah, let's say that you very generously say, Rabbi, give me one share of the 20 stocks available. Unbelievable investment. That does not mean that a person is exempt of Torah learning. You must learn Torah. Also, Gemilut Hasadim. Also, you need to invest a few moments of the day to learn Torah. Because at the end of the day, even though Zebulun was happy, he had the peace of mind that the learning of Issachar was guaranteeing his safe return and his beracha, but Zebulun also established time to learning of Torah. So, I see the 915 class is entering the room now. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. So, for those who listen to this class, you have 20 stocks available, 20 shares of the mega IPO of the Syrian Kolel here. You will become a founder. You will get a plaque by Ezat Hashem in the Kolel room. And flexible payment plan is available and tax deductible. You can do it for Beracha, Refua, Le'ilu Nishmat. And don't tell me that I didn't tell you. When it's going to explode the IPO, then you're going to come back crying. I'm going to tell you 52. <laughs> Today, I have three days special. And Mahila. I forgot to tell you, important. I have a matching grant. You know what that means? Meaning to say, for every founder of 18, somebody gives me 18. Can you imagine? You give 18, I get another 18. He gives 18, I get another 18. That's called matching grant. IPO, 20 shares available for the next Three days. I may be extended for another day. This is the special of the day. This is Zebulun. This is Zebulun's Nasi today. That's why I'm talking about it. Because today is the day where money and Torah, they supplement each other. So, is that Hashem, anybody interested? Let me know and we'll take care of you. We'll do the auto pay and take all the information for the plaque. And by Zat Hashem, help us to help you and to help the entire Kahal Kadosh. With this being said, I'm going to switch now to the 915 voice recording and topic. So I'm going to pause your recording, Professor, for a minute. Those watching, don't leave. Keep it on? No. Keep it on because I'm standing right away. We can say Kaddish quickly. רבי חנניה מן הקשה אומר, רצה הקדוש ברוך הוא לזכות את איסא לפיכך, ירבה להם תורה מזוות שנאמר, אדוני חפש למען סדקו, יגדיל תורה וידיר. אמין. אמן יהיה שם רבה מברך לעלם לא מעל מיה יתברך וישתבח ויתפה ותרום מן הסב ויתדר ויתלם ויתלן שם ודקות שבריך ומחדש שם ודקות שבריך ומחדש שם ודקות שבריך ומחדש שם אמין Amen. 
بریبه همین همین ready professors ready gentlemen okay از حرب حبوب نسی عطوات اسکول شنیم ربوت عباد کل سنه ready Good morning, Rabotai, Shavua Tovu Mevorach, Tiskule Shanim Rabot to everybody. On this third day of the month of Nisan, corresponding to the eighth day of April 2019, the Lighthouse Live Video Feed Torah Project, dedicated to Ilui Nishmat Devorah Feige Bat Shemuel, and for the Refua Shelema of Ora Devorah Bat Rifka, the iTorah.com audio file. Dedicated Lirfua Shelema, David Menachem, Ben Devoralea, Shiduch for Nehamadina, Bat Hanabatia, among all the single boys and girls from Am Israel, may they have the merit very, very soon to walk under the Hopa with a proper Zivug. Amen. Amen. Today, I'd like to speak about the topic of the Nesi'im. The Nesi'im. And I said this, I believe, yesterday or Shabbat, that we have a tradition which is found in every prayer book at the end of the prayers. During the 13 days of Nisan, we say the Nesi'im. The Nesi'im is a short paragraph from the Torah, remembering how in the time of the inauguration of the Mishkan, there were 12 representatives who offer the inaugural korban in the Mishkan. First one, Nachshon from the tribe of Yehuda. Yesterday was from the tribe of Issachar. Today, Zebulun. Issachar represents Torah learning. Zebulun represents the businessmen. So since we have a lot of businessmen in the audience, and a smart businessman likes to invest in a winning stock, I will share with you an unbelievable opportunity that you're going to have in a few minutes to invest in something that Be'ezat Hashem will give you superb amount of dividends. And I know that usually don't talk about business. But today, in honor of Zebulun, I'm going to talk about business. Because Zebulun represents the smart businessmen. So what level of smartness? There are many different levels of businessmen. But there is a businessman that works very, very hard. And he doesn't have a guaranteed return. There is a businessman... When he sees a good deal, a good opportunity, right? He grabs it and makes it. Baruch Hashem. And there are those who have a lot of siata dishmaya. They don't think too much. They just do what they need to do. They rely on the Almighty and the blessing comes. Before I talk the business proposition of today, which is business, spiritual, etc. Let's go quickly through the lineup of the offerings of the Mishkan. Right away, when I said the name of the three Sadikim, or the Shevatim rather, I didn't go into the names, we see something very interesting, that they are not lined up in the way that they were born. Actually, tomorrow will be Reuven, which should have been the first one. But the Torah inverses the order of the Nesi'im. First, the Torah says, Nachshon ben Aminadav. And I'm sure that everyone knows the reason why Nachshon was honored to be the first person to bring a sacrifice into the Mishkan. Short answer, Mesirut Nefesh. 
he devoted himself to the Almighty. Even when he came to crossing the Red Sea, if you remember that fateful day, on the seventh day of Pesach, known as Shevi'ish al-Pesach, and the Jewish people, seeing that the Egyptians are behind them, there was a commotion among the Jewish nation. What do we do? One group said, let's go back to Egypt. Another group says, let's run away. To where? To the left, to the right, or the water? Nachshon says, to the water. Nachshon, to the water? Of course. If God took us out of Egypt for the purpose of giving us the Torah, so no water will stop us. And that's a pasuk from Shir Hashirim. Remember this pasuk. I'm going to say it in Hebrew and translate. Ma'im Rabbim. I'm going to do it in a singing manner. Ma'im Rabbim. Lo yuchelo lechabodet ahava unharot lo ishtefuha. What's the meaning of this verse? Ma'im Rabbim. A lot of waters will never be able to extinguish the love that God has for the Jews and the love that a Jew has for a Kadosh Baruch Hu. And no river will drown it. Somebody told me yesterday that in Iran, 26 states are under flooding. Do you understand? Flooding Mabul, Iran, Paras. 26, Shem Hashem. Use your Yiddish cop, Rabotai. When you listen to the news, when you hear the headlines, understand the godly messages, and no one can deny it, that unfortunately Iran today, it's one of the biggest enemies of Am Israel. They are the one who always swear, they are the ones who always threat, they are the ones who are fomenting, God forbid, anti-Semitism and terrorism. This is, a, this, is, this is not a secret. What I'm sharing with you is not a secret. But you need to know, the more they talk, the deeper they will go down. It's just a matter of time. And don't worry, because already Shalomo HaMelech says the following, says, don't be afraid of those that plan against you and those that talk against you. In other words, Borei Olam is with us. And that's what Nachshon did. Nachshon says, water is going to stop me. He went into the water. Like Abraham Avinu. Remember Akedat Ishak? What happened with Akedat Ishak? The same thing. When Abraham Avinu got up early that day, earlier than usual, and went with his son to the Akedah, do you know how many times the Yesed Ara attempted to stop Abraham Avinu? Sometimes he appeared like an old man. Sometimes he appeared like a woman. Sometimes it turned into water. Preventing Abraham Avinu of doing the Akedah. As the Pasuk says, Higiyo Maim Ad Nafesh. The waters reach my soul. So like the miracle of Abraham, that the waters split. The miracle of Nachshon, the waters split. And both of them, Abraham Avinu and Nachshon, they show us Mesirut Nefesh. Sacrificing to serve God. I spoke about this topic a few days ago, but I'm going to go quickly just to continue in the tapestry of today's class. Walls, water, happened to be the blockade or the roadblock to Nashon. But water is a metaphoric explanation in our life as well. You don't need to have water. Sometimes a person has a wall, right? A wall that prevents the person of going further. That wall, many times, could be here. Could be in the mind of the person. Sometimes a yeserara tells you, look, look, you cannot go, you cannot go, you cannot. There is a wall in front of you. It's like you have a smoke screen, right? 
smoke, but it's nothing. It's hollow. But to the mind, ooh, there is a blockade that cannot go any further. So Nachshon teaches us that whenever a person, whenever a person wants to get closer to Akadosh Baruch Hu, and you see roadblocks in your life, continue. Pray for heavenly assistance, because at the end of the day, the Talmud says three things. To the pathway that a person wants to go to, Shamaim guides the person. But there are two more statements. If a person wants to do the right thing, Shamaim helps the person. And God forbid, if a person wants to separate themselves from God, the freedom of choice is given to the person. But it is important, it is important that we train ourselves in enhancing our self-esteem. Meaning to say, believing in ourselves. Believing that we have the power Believing that we have the courage. Believing that we are able. Thank you so much, Madam. Mercy. That we are able to achieve whatever we want in our life. Obviously, with the proper guidance, with the proper mindset. But one thing that we can never forget. That for every step of our life, we need to have God, Hashem, Holding our hands. As long as God, Hashem, holds our hands, no water will stop me. No river will stop me. No tsunami, no hurricane. And although I'm using physical examples of real life, but many of these situations are not physical, are emotional and spiritual. This was Nachshon. Go forward. Let's talk about yesterday's Nasi. Issachar and today's Zebulun. The Pasuk says, and I'm going to mix Issachar and Zebulun because they were a partner. They were a tag team. Like Moshe and Aharon, David, Shelomo, Yaakov, Yosef, Abraham, Sarah. So was Issachar and Zebulun. They had a beautiful partnership that in a few moments, I'm going to give you an opportunity with limited availability, and I'm honest in what I'm saying, to invest soon. The Pasuk writes, Ismach Zebulun Besetecha Beisachar Beohalecha. In plain English, this verse means as follows. Ismach Zebulun Besetecha. Let Zebulun rejoice in his departure, in his traveling. Beisachar Beohalecha. And Isachar in his tent, in the Ohel. Another Pasuk says, Zebulun Lehof Yamim Ishkon. Zebulun will dwell. On the oceans. So Zebulun traveled for Parnassah. In English, I think they call it sea merchant. Correct? He will travel on the ocean. And this is how he will bring Parnassah to his home. But I ask you a question. We all know that traveling brings its own challenges. And I'm not talking only about the 21st century. Today, with immigration, homeland security, uh, TSA, and fear factor, traveling is also a challenge. It takes you a long time. Sometimes you need to be to the airport earlier than it takes the flight, correct? And you got to wait for the luggage. So to travel today, it has... A lot of elements 
that maybe 10, 20, 30 years ago, they didn't have. But go back a thousand years ago, 500 years ago, 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago. Traveling, there was no guaranteed return. Because there were many factors affecting the life of the person. Number one, danger. Flooding, rains, hurricanes, pirates. And yet the Torah says, Zebulun had life insurance. Like we discussed yesterday. Insurance, bitahon. And the Pasuk says, Semach Zebulun besetecha. Zebulun will be happy upon his journey. If it's up to me, I'll be happy if I come back. But the Torah says, no. You need to know Zebulun. Veisachar beohalecha. The Torah tells us that Isachar and Zebulun had a partnership. Isachar will learn Torah, and that's why the word Isachar means yesh sechar, the concept of the reward for those who learn Torah. And he will spend learning Torah all day long. And Zebulun will support the learning of Issachar. And that's a concept of Issachar Zebulun partnership. Issachar learned Torah, part of the Zechut, part of the merit of Issachar will go to Zebulun, and part of the income of Zebulun will support Issachar to give the peace of mind for Issachar to be able to learn Torah without worries, without concern. But, before I start with the IPO, okay, very important, I'm not kidding, you'll be surprised at my IPO, better than the stock market, by far. True. I'm a businessman also, by the way. <laughs> Besides Torah, not that I run the world of business, but I bring the business into Torah, Isachar Zebulun. So I'm going to give you an IPO that you cannot refuse. Unbelievable. But give me a minute. Even though you decide to invest in one of the 20 shares that I have available for the IPO, I'm not kidding you. Stay tuned and you listen. Only 20. Because Nachshon was only one. The tribes of Israel were only 12. So I'm giving you extra 20. I can make room for two more, 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. So I can handle that. Okay, no, relax. No, 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 no. Don't exaggerate because then it loses the value. You have to understand, IPO is one time. There is not the same IPO coming out every day. So I'm giving you four days of IPO options. Now, I need to clarify one thing. And for the video audience... And for those listening to this audio file, I don't want you to think that everything is about money. But everybody needs to agree. The Mishnah in Pirkei Avod that says, in En Kemah, En Torah. If there is no flower, there is no Torah. Meaning to say, if a person doesn't have the means of survival, how can a person learn Torah? So many people are gifted with a gift of business. But a handful of people are gifted with the love of Torah and the desire of Torah and the willingness to sit down and learn Torah. We need to understand this. The reality is that the majority belongs to the first group of business, but there is a small minority worldwide that has this love for Torah. But I need to say a disclaimer, the fine print. You know, when you invest, you get the prospectus, and there is fine print that you need a magnifying glass to read it, which, by the way, I have one on me. If you need one, I have it. You took it? Okay, I have it. Oh, right here. I have a magnifying glass on me all the time. 
all the time I walk around with this. Not because I'm in the diamond. He's in the diamond business. I'm in the, give me something more important than diamonds. Gold. Platinum? Gold, diamond, yeah. Okay, platinum, gold. I use this to check halachic questions that husbands bring to me on the topic of family purity. Of course, we also do this quietly, privately, respectfully. Sometimes a lady has a stain. I'm only creating an awareness. A lady has a stain and she doesn't know. Is this stain a problem? And she needs to go back to day one of the seven clean days or she needs, she's still in the time of Nida and she needs to wait or maybe this stain is not a problem. On what material is the stain? What color is the stain? What size is the stain? And sometimes the naked eye cannot truly see. It may appear to be red, but it's actually orange. It may appear to be brown, but it's actually blue, which doesn't really happen, but green, yellow, beige, orange, pink, red, wine, burgundy, black, these are all potential colors of bodily fluids that come. And I apologize to the wonderful female audience watching and listening, if I may have said this very, very fast, but this is something that I'm sure thousands upon thousands of holy Jewish wives have this. If you were never aware of this concept, go to my office and ask my office staff to give you the envelope for questions. We have a custom-made envelopes that the lady puts, let's say, third day of the checking in the morning, or IUD situation, or Nuva ring situation, or taking a pill situation, which many of these items that I mentioned may create certain additional staining that creates additional halachic questions. That's the reason why I walk around with this, because I don't know when I'm going to receive a question. Sometimes I get it at home, sometimes I get it in the supermarket, sometimes I get it in the office. So, you know, American Express says, don't leave your, your, your car, you don't leave home without it. So don't leave your suit without it. So all of my suits carry such a thing in my packet, on my left packet especially, okay? Correct? In order to uh, determine the kashrut, etc. Now, Let's talk about the disclaimer. Even though Zebulun generously supported the Torah learning of Issachar, that didn't allow Zebulun not to learn Torah. Learning Torah, it's mandatory. Till when Maimonides ask this question. Till day, till when? Till the day that the Hebra Kaddishah is called, God forbid, to take the person to the final resting place. What is the Maimonides trying to say? That not because we learn so much in our younger years that we can say, you know what? Okay, Dayenu. No. A person learns as much as they can as long as that physically and mentally they are able to learn. And sometimes you listen, sometimes you learn, etc. And this is important because many, many times a person says, I'm supporting a yeshiva, I'm supporting a kolel, I'm supporting a school. All that is beautiful and I'm so happy that you do that. But never forget that there is a halacha that says, when it comes to give charity, you need to take care of your needy, of your needy. And who is your needy? Yourself. You are the biggest needy person in your life. And I'm not minimizing the wife and the children. But what I'm trying to say is that a person, whoever the person is, must also feed the neshama with Torah learning. Not only with tefillah, 
not only with food, not only with misvod, not only with hesed, but Torah learning, and that's why the famous Gemara in the tractate Shabbat asked the question, Kabata aitim la Torah? Did you set up time to learn Torah? And today, I received three phone calls last week. So happy phone calls. Somebody is texting me from the airplane, from between Israel and uh, Miami, and somebody from Hong Kong to Miami. Rabbi, you sound the same 33,000 feet in the sky. I said, I'm not flying. I'm in Miami. He says, yeah, but I'm flying, and I connected to the Wi-Fi, and I'm listening to you. I said, Baruch Hashem, unbelievable. Can you imagine the power of technology that a person is flying and listening to the Torah class? And like me, I'm sure that it happens of many, 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 many rabbis worldwide that they have their email system, their they WhatsApp group, the, 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 the links, the itorah.com, the Lighthouse Torah Project, Torah Anytime. These are multi-powerful websites and Torah platforms that a person has access to Torah. So today, I don't have a class to listen to. It's no longer an excuse. You follow me? Sometimes when I'm home, I'm listening to myself. And somebody who was at home the other day says, Rabbi, why do you listen to yourself? He says, because I'm not sure that what I'm saying, you know, Baruch Hashem, I always we pray, we always pray personally. This is part of my personal prayers that whenever I'm about to give a class, that Hashem helps me to say the right things and to have the desired effect on the well-being of the spiritual well-being of the person. Why? Because has shalom, has shalom, and I have to say this, and we have seen it in real life, that sometimes rabbis who speak publicly can do a lot of help, can do a lot of benefit, but can also, God forbid, create certain challenges. And I don't have to go on things which are known of public knowledge, but we have heard in the past some rabbinical hiccups about public statements made about the topic of Torah. And that's what I'm trying to reinforce. That it's important that every one of us learns. Doesn't matter where you are. Because today, the world has no boundaries. I don't know who is watching. And I don't know who is listening. But I'm sure that if Google Maps gives you the location of each IP address, or maybe those watching can write quickly, I'm watching from Berlin, I'm watching from Cuba. No, Cuba has no internet. <laughs> okay. Okay, Mejila. I'm watching from Venezuela, but has no electricity, so forget about it. Okay, so... Iran. Iran, forget about it. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. These three countries definitely need Refua Shelema. But whoever the person is watching, look at this. A person far away can connect to someone that they never met in life. They see him to a movie, and now the person suddenly, the Neshama wakes up. This is the advantage that we need to take today of the gift that we have with the power of technology, etc. At this moment, I'm going to do something that I hardly do during a Torah class that is being recorded. I may throw in a couple of ideas, but now you are fortunate enough to be the first IPO that I'm going to offer you today. I have an IPO. I'm not kidding you. I'm not playing games. I have an IPO that has an incentive added. Flexible, tax deductible, flexible payment plan. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to put this on the screen, my email address. And I'm going to say it loud, so for those watching or listening, can write it down and contact me 
privately in my email. My rabbis, my address is rabbi at E as Edward or Edmund, J as Jacob, S as in Safra, F as Florida, and L has Lulav. Rabbi are E J S F L dot com. S F L dot com. Beautiful. Thank you. You can take it down. Beautiful. Hazakovaruch. So here is what's going on. With the blessing of the great rabbis from Israel, from Brooklyn, from Deal, as well as the blessing of our committee, a wonderful group of members of the synagogue, together with your humble servant and Rabbi Yazankot as well, feel the need of opening up in our synagogue a kolel. But I need to explain to you the type of kolel that we're going to be opening up. The kolel will have two parts. Morning, early morning, and early evening, we'll have six rabbinical students learning with anyone who wants to learn. Privately, Mishnah, Gemara, Halakha, Musar, whatever you desire. And the two other periods of the day, let's say from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., the rabbinical students are embarking into a five-year program to become rabbis. Meaning to say they will have halachic learning, periodics testing, they will have a Rosh Kolel, and we're going to be bringing great rabbis from Israel and from Brooklyn for the students to be tested and to eventually become future rabbis of Sephardic communities. The program, the initial program, is a five-year learning program. So what is my IPO to you today? We are looking for partners. 20 to 22 partners only. You become a founder of the Kolel. The cost of that foundership, it's called, it's cost only $18,000 $18, with a yearly flexible payment plan. And the bonus round is that for every founder, I have a matching grant. You follow me? You give 18, I get an additional 18. Unbelievable. Tax deductible, flexible payment plan, and guess what? You become Zebulun with Issachar. That's the idea of Issachar and Zebulun. I know that to some of us, that amount may sound a lot. But for some people, this amount is comfortable. We can take smaller monthly sponsorship because at the end of the day, the program requires maintenance. We have to have a Rosh Kolel. We have to have six rabbinical students. And we need to make sure that they have the peace of mind to be able to learn Torah for you and for me and for the community and for all of Am Israel. Every founder, he will have his name inscribed in the founder's wall of the second floor Midrash. We have a wall dedicated for this project. And I apologize if someone listening or watching feels a bit, why are you talking about money? I'm doing it for you. Today is Zebulun Day. So I gave you the IPO, 20 to 22 shares only, guaranteed return, and matching grant. Does it get better? Does it get better? You invest. Don't say your name. Does it get better? This is the best IPO available today for you. IPO, Rashid Evot, initial public offering. Before we go public, this is an in-house offering. Well, that is more expensive. Of course, that's why I'm giving you the details. Of course. After that, I don't have to tell you, I'm sorry. The foundership goes down. I know, but this IPO, 
this IPO, you know very well, with Hashem's help and everybody's participation, it will only go up. So, anybody interested, speak to me after the end of the class or contact me via email. So this way, or those who have my cell phone via WhatsApp, and by Ezat Hashem, we can do everything properly with a few dishary responsibility and supervision. Just a disclaimer, Baruch Hashem, for me from this zero, it's only my liaison to help you, to help the Kahal and anyone who wants to take advantage of this major, major step in our synagogue's life. Don't forget that by Ezat Hashem, the synagogue this year will be celebrating its 18th anniversary. High anniversary. So thank God we survive from day one till now. And I'm sure that the committee will be organizing a celebration later on in the year and will keep you posted when and where it's going to be. But now we need to give a gift to Akadosh Baruch Hu. So we come to the consensus that Baruch Hashem, the Minyanim are running daily, Torah classes are going on daily, the boys' programs, the girls' program, social hall coming up, playground about to start any day now, mikveh functioning, Baruch Hashem. So now we need to move to the next level. Creating a learning environment like Sha'are Sion has, Park Avenue Shul has, Dill Synagogue has, thousands, Ahava Ve'ahva, Ahava Tzion, Paitiya, Melev Binyamin, Bene Binyamin. So we are cloning the success that many other Sephardic Syrian synagogues worldwide are doing. So Be'ezat Hashem, the Kahal will be as generous as you can. And even if you cannot, whatever you do, do it from your heart, do it from your love. Do it from the bottom of your heart. And Be'ezat Hashem, Hashem will bring great, great beracha from the life of the person. Be per year, you, one year, one year commitment, we start. Maybe next year you say, Rabbi, I did so well, I want to do it again. But I need the initial boost. We're starting hopefully before Pesach. So we already have the young men. We already have a Rosh Kolel coming at willing. So everything is moving in the right direction. I just need the seed money to start. And by Zat Hashem, we don't look back. We look forward. Thank you so much. And you know what I am. Thank you. Beautiful. Anyways, and we can do a shiur in Sefer Haredim also. I'll throw it in for you. Anyways, so I'd like to say one thing. I have four more minutes before I get ready for the next class. Today, Monday, as you know, I have ladies' class in English. Not to worry, I'm not offering this to the wonderful ladies. Say, Rabbi, I'm waiting for my husband to give me money for the holiday. So I'm not going to bother them with that. But ladies can invest also. This is an opportunity for everyone. Baruch Hashem. And we have wonderful ladies from the synagogue and from the Shi'urim that they do a lot of things because they understand that, and I'm not trying to brag about what we do, but at the end of the day, you need to ask yourself, what I'm doing, how many people will benefit? Yeah, the other day, somebody approached me, and he says, Rabbi, I want to do something for you. True story. I want to do something for you. So one day, no name, a dear friend of mine, did something for me in the synagogue. He sponsored something on my honor. Beautiful. Because at the end of the day, the synagogue, Baruch Hashem, you know, we don't live on the man. We live on the kindness of people. So somebody said, Rabbi, I want to do something for you. So kidding to him, I said, no problem. You can sponsor the mic. This mic. This mic. Now, if you understand what I'm offering you, okay, you understand that this mic is very valuable. 
Why? Because this mic is utilized several hours a day in order to record the classes, to spread Torah. You understand? It's available for sponsorship. I'm not selling anything. But there is a beautiful menu outside in the lobby, all price range, flexible payment plan, etc. Let's go to a more serious note. I'm not looking for a job as a salesman. I know you want me to go for your company. Huh? Baruch Hashem. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. But I'm going to finish. And I apologize again if I took a financial detour in today's class. But it's all Leshem Shamayim. All Leshem Shamayim. You know the topic of today's perasha. The official name of the perasha, it's called Mesorah. Yesterday I explained that in many circles, they don't say the word Mesorah. They call it Tahor. Why? Because a person should avoid bringing words that denote something negative or painful. Somebody asked me yesterday, when I started with my IPO, which Baruch Hashem, we got one, I think, or two. Ask me, Rabbi, you're not afraid? You're not afraid? You're starting a new program that it costs to maintain the program. And it's a responsibility. Why now? Short answer. Because at this moment, we have the heavenly blessing of not being afraid. Afraid of what? Afraid of not being successful, of failing. But did you listen to my words? I can say failing or not being successful. They both mean the same. Our rabbis tell us that when the Perashaf today talks about Mosira, it's not limited only Lashonara. It's not limited only to profanity or vulgarity. But it means in your way of life. Are you afraid or you are Nashon? Are you fearful or you willing to cross the river? Guess what? Our Torah teaches us in today's Perasha that as long that we keep a positive attitude and a positive mindset, the sky is the limit. And that's why we call it Tahor. Tahor. How many times the Pasuk says, Tahor who? In last week's Torah portion, every step in the reading, Tahor who? Tahor who? Why do we finish the Aliyah? Tahor who? Because there is a concept that when you finish an Aliyah or when you start an Aliyah in the Sefer Torah, you should finish with something positive always. This is the message of the day. Hashem should give us the strength and the ability and the financial support to be able to launch this mega, mega program for the Edmond J. Safra Synagogue, Be'ezat Hashem, and let it be that this brings great beracha to all of the participants, to all of the supporters, and everyone who really loves Torah, enjoys Torah, because at the end of the day, Torah is life. Ki hem hayenu ve'orech yamenu. This is it. As long as we are happily married with the Torah, Am Israel Hai. We live, we survive, and we overcome all the unfortunate challenges that are right to finish with a positive statement. Torah magna umasla. The merit of the Torah protects, and the merit of the Torah saves the person. So I'm going to say goodbye. Tomorrow, tomorrow, happy day. Today is super day. But tomorrow, happy day as well. And I'm saying this now just in case. Tomorrow, Be'ezat Hashem, we're going to have a Berit Milah. The time of the Berit Milah is at 
But I don't think that we're going to start till 10 o'clock. The beautiful part of it is that I'm honored to be the Sandak tomorrow. Okay? So I don't know my availability. Because if I need to sit in the chair of Eliyahu and Navi, hold the baby, I can't talk to the mic. But I asked the Abiyah Ben for a few minutes. We, sh we have a short class tomorrow, 10 to 15 minutes, because I don't want to keep Eliyahu and Navi waiting. Okay? We'll transfer the class upstairs to the second floor. And then after the short class, we come down to the main sanctuary. We'll have the Berit Milah. And by Zat Hashem, I told the Aviyah Ben yesterday night when he called me with such a great news. He says, you put me in trouble now. He says, why? Now I have to do Teshuvah. If I'm going to sit as a Sandak for your son tomorrow, I better be good. So by Zat Hashem, I'm thankful for this uh, kindness and generosity of the Aviyah Ben. And by Zat Hashem, may Hashem make me to be a suitable conduit of blessing and abundance, abundance for the child and obviously for the Kahal Kadosh. Amen. Amen. So for those watching, maybe a short class. For those listening, maybe a short class. But by Zat Hashem, we'll do the class because we need to continue with our daily regimen of Torah study. Baruch Adonai Amen.